Good evening and you're joining the national news broadcast on Channel Lai. We are ready to bring you the top stories from home and around the world. I'm Natalia Virvadhan. Good evening, I'm Stefan Dialwis. Let's take a look at the top stories for tonight. The President orders the Bribery Commission to investigate into Sri Lankans and their dealings as revealed through the Pandora Papers and to submit a report. Minister Dallas Alahab Peruma says that the President's decision to conduct an investigation regarding the Pandora report on Sri Lankans is a justifiable measure. The Petroleum Resource Act relating to oil excavations around the island has been approved. An increase in the numbers of corona infections in Russia and Poland. Cabinet approves the setting up of Sri Lanka's first chartered mass media institute. President Gotabe Rajapaksha has ordered the commission inquiring charges on bribery or corruption to immediately conduct an investigation on the Sri Lankans engaged in dealings as disclosed through the Pandora Papers and to hand him over a report within one month's time. Reports have been published in media recently regarding a Sri Lankan citizen or more citizens engaged in dis depositing large sums of money. It has been reported that President's Director General of Legal Affairs, Hari Gupta Rohanadira, has informed in writing to the Director General of the Commission investigating charges on bribery or corruption today regarding the issue on the orders of the President. President's media spokesman King Sri Ratnayaka said that the Pandora Papers has stirred much controversy worldwide since several days ago. The names of Sri Lankans were alleged to have been involved in these dealings. The President has instructed the Chairman of the Bribery and Corruption Investigation Commission this morning to conduct an immediate investigation regarding Sri Lankans connected to the issue and to provide a report within a month. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dallas Alaha Peruma says that the President has taken a reasonable decision to conduct an immediate investigation into factors pertaining to Sri Lanka mentioned in the Pandora Papers. He was addressing a media briefing to convey cabinet decisions. Minister Dallas Alahab Perma said that they are grateful for taking a decision regarding the issue. This was discussed at last night's cabinet meeting as well. Charges have been filed against 300 persons worldwide, including Tony Blair and Tendulka. The minister said that the re he remembers that in the year 2013, it had been pointed out that no politician representing the government was accused. This was disclosed in the offshore leaks revelation. There had been a note regarding a Sri Lankan institution head in the Panama Papers of 2016. In the year 2017, the media personnel involved in ICIJ investigation had made a similar disclosure titled Paradise Papers. Then Pakistan President had made a statement regarding two cabinet colleagues on this occasion. No finger had been pointed against any government member. There had been accusations in Pandora Papers regarding a businessman and his spouse. ले Co-Cabinet spokesman Minister Ramesh Patirana has made a clarification regarding the manner on the payment of compensation in the event of a decrease in harvest or productivity of crops due to application of organic fertilizer. Minister Ramesh Patirana said that a comparative study has to be made regarding declining harvest and productivity by the end of the year. This program begins this year. Therefore, a methodology and compensation should have to be made after a post-inspection. The Ministry of Agriculture and the government will take measures in this regard. Only quality organic fertilizers suited to the country are being imported. The procurement process is being carried out in an extremely transparent manner. The government has provided official identification cards to the teacher principals in connection with the Teacher's Day today. 
Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana has presented them to the principals at a ceremony held at the Education Ministry under the theme, The Heart of the Revival of Education is the Teachers. Official IDs have not been provided up to now to the teacher principals. President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha have extended best wishes on this connection. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha says it should be recalled as a government which has safeguarded and continuously safeguarding the honour of the teacher profession and they are ready to listen to the reasonable demands of the teachers. He has also requested the teachers to consider of teacher respect and the well-being of the children while engaging in professional struggles. The Prime Minister further said that the government is fully aware of the efforts of the teachers to teach the digital child who is unable to remain in the classroom during the period of pandemic. He adds that their intention is to hand over the best of things to the child who is preparing to take over the future of the country. The government has taken over the challenge to create the Sri Lankan teacher to suit to the universal need. Teachers are like strong bows and the children are the arrows placed on these bows. The Prime Minister also said that as a philosopher Gibran had stated, the task of the teachers is to strengthen these arrows and to target them to the exact position. The Prime Minister added that he has to bring to the attention of the teachers once again the fact that the hearts of reviving the education of the children stricken by the COVID pandemic lie with the teachers. Minister Dinesh Kunwardana said that they hope to open the temporary closed down schools in the third week of this month and by the 21st. The aim is to reopen 3,000 schools island-wide which have the least number of students. Teaching is an esteemed and noble profession. He added that the government is committed to safeguard the honour of this profession and the revival of teaching. State Minister Susil Premchand, Vichit Behrugoda, Sita Ramipula, Teacher Advisory Committee Member and Parliamentarian Yadaman Sardar, Parliamentarian Ambassador, Minister Uday Agamampila said that the opposition has stated that a bill to privatize the Petroleum Corporation was to be presented to Parliament this week. He adds that the bill presented today does not mention even the name of privatization. The aim of the presentation of the bill is to effectively use the unexplored oil and gas resources in the country. It also aims to draft the necessary legal framework in this regard. The minister further said that India has dug nine oil wells near the Indo-Sri Lanka border and receiving oil. The minister has recalled during the tenure of President Mahinda Rajapaksa, four oil wells were dug in the M2 zone in Mana. Oil deposits were detected in three of the four wells. According to the world findings, oil could be found in only one out of four wells. The only way to bring Sri Lanka out of the economic crisis is to earn revenue from oil and gas resources. He also said that according to an agreement signed in February of 2003, 99 oil tanks were given on a lease for a period of 35 years. When a group of officials had attempted to enter the field of the oil tanks, the group of LIOC Institute seized the officials and handed them over to the police. Sri Lanka will get back the tanks only in the year 2038. The minister also said that they have already commenced the process of retaking this resource handed over to India by the present-day opposition. The world's largest container cargo ship has reached the Colombo Harbour last night. The vessel belonging to the Evergreen Shipping Service is named as Everace. The ship has embarked upon its maiden voyage on the 28th of July this year for commercial purposes in the Asia and the European regions. It has been regarded as a special feature of the ship sailing to Colombo port in its preliminary journey. The gigantic sea craft has a length of 400 meters and a width of 61.5 meters. It has a height of 14.5 meters. The Sri Lanka Port Authority has greeted with tradition by means of a water ceremony when it arrived at the CI City jetty. 
The massive craft is equipped with a capacity of 24,000 containers. The South Korean manufactured vessel in its maiden sea journey was anchored in numerous ports, including Qingdao, Shanghai, Ningbo, Taipei, and Sandian, prior to its arrival in Colombo. It has commenced the trip to Colombo port from the Rotterdam harbour in Netherlands on the 19th of September. The ship is reachable only to 24 harbours in the world. And all these harbours are located in the European and the Asian continents. Another special feature is that Colombo Harbour is the only harbour in South Asia where the Evaez ship is able to enter. Among those who were present at the port to welcome the ship included Minister of Ports and Shipping Rohit Apegunavardhana and the Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Captain Nihal Kapatipola. And the captain of the visiting ship has exchanged traditional plaques with the minister and the officials. The health divisions reiterate that it is the responsibility of all citizens to take measures to control the rapid increase of COVID-19 disease once again in Sri Lanka. In a survey conducted by our television crews, it has been found out that many people continue to travel on the roads without properly covering their faces with face masks. This is the scene of the Haliella Week Fair located on the Badula Colombo main road. The pictures clearly depict how people and the traders not taking care to protect their faces with face masks. 582 COVID-19 infected persons were detected in the country today. Accordingly, the total number of patients undergoing treatment is at 30,993. 470 patients have recovered today. The number of totally recovered COVID-19 patients is at 478,326. Director General of Health Services has confirmed 43 COVID-19 related deaths yesterday. 36 victims were 60 years or above. There were seven fatalities between the ages of 30 and 59 years. 26,582,559 persons have so far been inoculated under the COVID immunization program. Out of this number, 12,615,232 have received their first dose. The number of those who have received both doses was at 11,967,327. A vaccination program for university students will be conducted from next Monday to Friday. Vaccination of children with inherent diseases and disabilities between the ages of 12 and 19 years in the Vaunia district has commenced today. These programs are being conducted at the Vaunia district hospital as well as in several other hospitals. Meanwhile, the health ministry says that necessary doses of booster vaccines or the third dose recommended for persons by the health sectors have already been ordered. And meanwhile, getting back to the island with the, some more local news, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha took the initiative today to inaugurate a project to provide permanent solutions for the drinking water issue in the Jaffna Peninsula. The Prime Minister inaugurated this initiative by vesting the Nagadipa water purification plant with the public while connecting two other projects. The Prime Minister has joined live via online uh, from the Temple Trees on the occasion of the opening of the Sea Water Purification Plant in Nagadipa, Jaffna. The new plant will engage in the systematic distribution of water to the islands of Nagadipa, Analathiu and Eluathiu. 5,000 families will be directly benefited from the project. The Prime Minister has also presided over via online today on the commencement of construction of the Thalayari Sea Water Purification Plant and the laying of pipes in the Urban Water Supply Scheme in Jaffna. 186 Brahmin Ladavi divisions are scheduled to be provided pure drinking water via the Kilinochi Water Supply Project. The projects are being implemented through the funds of the central government and the financial assistance of the Asian Development Bank. The Thala Yadi Sea Water Purification Plant engages in transforming seawater into secured drinking water source. These projects, as well as the water pipeline project, will bring redress to around 300,000 persons. The project is scheduled to be completed by the year 2023. Meanwhile, National Water Supply and Drainage Board has made plans to increase the secured pipe borne water supply to 60% from the existing current 9.6% by the year 2025. 
All religious clergymen headed by chief incumbent of the Nagadi Praja Mahavihare, Venerable Navadagala Padamakirti Thera, have extended their gratitude to the government, including the President and the Prime Minister, for the progressive water supply project. State Minister Sanat Nishanta and other people representatives, including state officials, have also participated in the event. Foreign Minister Prof. G. L. Piri says that many relevant and important decisions have been taken during the official Sri Lanka visit of the Indian Foreign Secretary. He has made these observations at a media briefing of the Sri Lanka Podhichana Peramana today. Minister Prof. G. L. Piri said that his tour was not restricted to any particular project. Sri Lanka has received many benefits, including commencement of many projects related to the well-being and preservation of Buddhism. During the tour, Foreign Secretary Shringala has sent up a 15 million US dollar fund established under the personal intervention of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. 100 model villages will be set up for the benefit of Pirivan, Scoville's, and also for the housing and education sectors. 25 houses are to be set up in every district. Laboratory facilities and buildings are to be provided for schools in the north. The Indian government has also provided resources for the establishment of a professor post at the Sabaragamo University. India has also expressed willingness to maintain the Jaffna Cultural Center for five years. Sri Lanka receives the largest number of tourists from India. Therefore, the Foreign Secretary has made arrangements to expand Sri Lankan airline destinations to many cities in India, and large-scale Indian investments will reach the Sri Lankan industries. The work in the Lotus Tower project is nearing completion. The Sri Lanka Tem Telecommunication Regulatory Commission has taken measures to plan its commercialization and maintenance activities. A water garden is scheduled to be constructed along the Bera Lake in the vicinity of the tower with the objective of attracting local and foreign visitors. It has also been proposed to set up food, marketing stalls, residential quarters and infrastructure facilities for the staff in the premises. The planned vehicle park is to be further expanded. The cabinet has granted approval for the proposal presented by the president in his capacity as the Minister of Technology to hand over to the Sri Lanka Telecommunication Regulatory Commission a land with an extent of four acres, three roods and three perches belonging to the Urban Development Authority for the implementation of development activities adjacent to the project location. The project commenced to cover high-speed internet connections in the Ratnapura district is scheduled to be completed in 2022. The government's objective is to expand the project covering the entire island. The necessary funds are being provided by the Telecommunication Development Fund. The Cabinet of Ministers have approved a proposal presented by the President in his capacity as the Minister of Technology to implement the relevant project. The government has taken steps to establish an institute by the name of Sri Lanka Chartered Mass Media Institute. The Minister of Mass Media has presented a cabinet paper in this regard. According to the proposal, it will be upgraded into a mass media higher education research and training institute, providing education on mass media from certificate level to graduate and postgraduate levels. The new institute will accord opportunities for those engaged in the media field, including media managers, as well as students who are hoping to enter the field of mass media. The cabinet has also granted approval for the setting up of a company affiliated to the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation for the manufacturing of liqu liquefied petroleum gases, utilizing the refinery produce of the corporation. Accordingly, the CPC will come to the market as a third-party competitor. The corporation Sapugaskanda Refinery daily produces 70 to 90 metric tons of LP gas. This is only 5% of the local demand. A feasibility study is underway for the setting up of a new refinery with a daily capacity of 10,000 barrels and also to upgrade the existing refinery facility. The government has taken measures to introduce a new law to deal with obscene statements disseminated via information technology and other medium. The clearance of the Attorney General has been received for the bill drafted by the legal draftsman in this connection. The draft bill is to be published in the Government Gazette shortly. Thereafter, it will be tabled in Parliament. The Cabinet of Ministers have approved the proposal submitted to the Cabinet in this regard by the Minister of Justice. 
the government of India has agreed to provide 300 million rupees for the construction of smart classrooms and modern computer laboratories in 200 schools in the Gold District. The cabinet has granted approval for the agreement and understanding schedule to be signed in this regard. That's it for the news this evening. Have a good night. Good night and stay safe.